this is a, a new module I've been working on. I call this the 2H Pico. It's um, this one here. Actually, there's two copies of it here. It uses the Raspberry Pi Pico 2, and we made it into kind of a generic 2HP module. I started out with this design here. This is a dual LFO, and I uh, realized if I just modify this design a little bit, I can come up with a generic module which will do all kinds of different stuff. So let's just start with a, a quick demo. So this is a generative sequencer. It's, uh, it's a bit like the uh, Turing machine, but with uh, some interesting twists. And this is running a version of the Immutable Instruments uh, Rings code. That's a little loose there. Tighten that up a bit. So the sequencer has a, this knob is a probability of changing notes, the probability of changing gates. This one is the range of notes, and this is the pitch. On the second page we have um, scales, and uh, I think that was all it. So you can see what happens here when I press the, the button, the color changes. So this indicates red is the first set of parameters, green is the second set of four parameters. And uh, there's, in this case there's just two sets of parameters for this module. So this one is the uh, running the rings code, or a version of the rings code. So you can see here this is uh, structure. This one is uh, brightness, I think it is. Yeah, brightness. And this one is the uh, sustain. This is the pitch. And on the second page we have um, Sustain, I think, if you turn it up past halfway, it sustains, starts to distort. And this one is uh, Accent. So, just turn that off. There's a little bit of delay in there just to make things interesting. So, you it may have already figured out this thing is a sequencer and this thing is generating audio so this module can do different things which makes it interesting um, so it's kind of inspired by the the 2HP modules which they have something called 2HP Pluck which is very similar to this um, but this module can actually reproduce a lot of the 2HP modules just by itself so let's take a, a little bit more detailed look at the hardware So this is the board. As you can see, this is a uh, this is actually a WaveShare uh, board. It's like a compact uh, Pico, so it has I think 20 GPIOs on it, and it worked very well because uh, obviously this thing has to be pretty small. Um, this is a Pico 2. You can get the Pico uh, or like the RP2040 in the in the same form factor, so it should work as well. I chose the Pico 2 because it's got uh, significantly more compute power, and that's that's important when you're running code like, uh, say, the Mutable Instruments Rings code, quite in compute intensive. In fact, I had to overclock it to 250 megahertz to run that Rings patch. So, again, I mentioned um, front panel here. We've got the four controls. So let's just go from top to bottom. So this top in input is always an input, so it can be either a CV input or a trigger or a gate or a clock or something like that. Uh, this one is the same. And we have a little uh, RGB LED on here. And you see, uh, uh, this is a 3D printed panel. Um, and I have a little collimator, and this is just a little piece of uh, clear filament used as a light pipe. And then we have our button, four pots, and the second CV clock gate input. And this output can be either CV out or audio out. Now there's a strapping option on the bottom of the board here. This little jumper here, solder jumper. And that makes both of these into CV or audio outs. So it depends on what you want to do with the thing, how you want to program it. So quickly go through here. We got our power input, a little 5 volt regulator. Um, we have two tiny little analog switches here. 
we actually need six inputs because we have um, you know, two CV inputs and we have four pots, so we actually need to have six and the, the, the uh, Raspberry Pi processor, the, the 2040 and the 2350 only have four analog inputs, so we mux them with those little switches. This op amp is for uh, conditioning the two analog inputs. Um, the audio, or the DAC I chose is, is a PT8211. Um, this one is interesting. It's, it's super cheap, and this thing's literally cost 20 or 25 cents a piece on AliExpress. And uh, it's a 16-bit it's a R2R DAC, and it uses I2S, so it's intended for audio, um, but there's no anti-aliasing filters on it, so it's basically DC coupled. And this little op-amp here is used for um, anti-aliasing filters and uh, buffer to buffer the output, but it's also DC coupled, so that allows me to do audio out or CV out, um, just depending on how you program the thing, so that's kind of cool. And uh, again, we just got some connectors here to connect the front panel to the uh, the rear panel. And yeah, so that's all there is to it. There's nothing on the bottom because you have to keep the thing nice and narrow. It has to fit into uh, 2 HP, which is about 10 millimeters. So as you can see, for a change, I designed some PCBs for this thing. Uh, I discovered uh, KiCad 9, and uh, it's a really good package. So I decided to make some... Um, some boards for this thing because it's obviously this is kind of a generic module and it can do all sorts of different things and I've already coded up um, six little applets for it so um, what I did was a, an ADSR so we have a trigger input oh pardon me this way trigger input and then ADSR and uh, and the ADSR outputs or the CV outs come out these two jacks I coded up uh, that generative sequencer you saw, which is kind of interesting. I didn't really talk much about the sequencer. Um, I'll come back to that one. I'll maybe do another video because I'm still working on it. But it's like a pretty cool uh, variation on something like a Turing machine. I think it's a lot more musical. I also coded up... Um, what else did I do? Oh, there's a, like a Moog voice. It's like a mini Moog. So... You have uh, on the first page of parameters you have three oscillators. On the second page of the parameters you have the uh, um, Moog style um, low pass filter. The third page is ADSR, and the fourth page is an LFO. So you can basically it's structured like a mini Moog. You have three oscillators into a filter into a VCA uh, controlled by um, an ADSR, and then you have an optional LFO to modulate things. So that's one of the more complex ones. Um, the downside of something this simple in terms of the user interface is that, you know, if you're trying to control four pages of parameters, it kind of gets a little get, bit uh, confusing. So you probably want to lay these things out with as few pages of parameters as possible and maybe try and keep them consistent from module to module so um, you don't get too confused. But so what else did I write? I wrote um, yeah the generative sequencer also wrote a step sequencer. So on the step sequencer, the first uh, first page is the first four steps. Second page is the second four steps. The third page is like for a, a scale quant quantizer and a clock divider. And I don't, don't think I used the other two parameters. Um, what else did I caught up? A snare drum, a bass drum, and. Uh, yeah, probably some other stuff too. I'll keep writing this stuff. I'm having great fun coding this thing because it can do so much for such a simple module, and it's really cheap. Um, like I said the the um, the PT8211 literally costs um, 20 or 25 cents on AliExpress. Garden variety, a five volt regulator, a couple of op amps. These switches are maybe 80 cents or a buck a piece, and I bought these on Amazon. They cost me about seven dollars Canadian uh, per board. And uh, some connectors, the, the PCBs for the, these two PCBs, a set of five from GLC PCB, was, um, um, what was it, 850 US, including shipping. So they're, uh, they're, the boards are really cheap too. Now if you panel these, of course you could probably get three or four times as many, and it will, <laughs> wouldn't cost much more money. So there's that. Um, what else can I say about it? Um, the development environment is um, Arduino Pico. So 
uh, I really become very fond of that environment and coding with the Pico. They're great, you know, cheap processors with quite a bit of power. I used, uh, for some of these uh, apps, I used a library called Daisy SP, which was um, uh, put together by Electrosmith for their Daisy module, but it's open source. I modified the library so it worked better with Arduino, at least I think it does anyway. Um, so I'll, that's on my GitHub as well. And uh, so Daisy SP has got a ton of stuff in it. You know, I just scratched the surface of what you can do with Daisy SP. So the ADSR comes from uh, Daisy SP. The, um, the low pass filter and the mini Moog module and the oscillators and the LFO and all that stuff comes from Daisy SP. So there's effects in it, there's oscillators and, and uh, yeah, filters and all kinds of stuff. It's, it's collected from uh, mutable instruments, code, and various other open source uh, projects like uh, Soundpipe. But they put it together in a very nice package and it's very well documented, so um, pretty straightforward to code. So in terms of the apps, uh, again, I've coded about six of these, and I'll put them all up on my GitHub. Um, about 80 to 90% of the code is, is boilerplate, which I've already written. So it's it's all about, you know, sampling the pots and, you know, scale quantizers and stuff like this. So once you see one of these apps and take a look at how it works, it's a matter of coding it to, to, to do what you want to do. And if you're using a DZSP, you basically pick what you want and instantiate those as objects and then you basically um, you know, use them in your sketch. And the way I've structured this is that the there's two cores on this, this part, of course. The first core is running the user interface that's sampling the pots and stuff, um, kind of running the logic of the module. The second core is dedicated to doing uh, the DSP stuff and outputting to the um, the, the, the DAC, the audio stuff. So, um, again, um, you in general for Daisy SP, you're you're virtually always going to have to use a, a Pico 2 because it's floating point code and it wouldn't run worth a damn on the uh, on the RP2040. So yeah, so where are we at? So I got these two prototypes, so or, or two first versions of it. This is the prototype uh, that it's based on. Um, so the boards are ready to go. I've, I've built two of these. They work fine. Um, so I'll put the board files up on GitHub. Uh, the bomb, the uh, um, the Gerbers, stuff like that. And I'll put the sketches up there. So yeah, so if you want to uh, get going with this thing, um, everything will be there shortly. Yeah, I'm working on uh, a new version of this board as well. Uh, it's better suited to audio processing, so it'll have an audio input on the top and then uh, either one or two audio outputs as well as the CV input. And I'm thinking of making this one optional CV input as well. So it's going to use the same panel, but it will use a different um, PCB. What I'm going to do is I take this um, cheapo DAC off and I'll put on um, the PCM, I think it's 1808, it's a 24-bit um, audio ADC and the PCM5102A which is a 24-bit uh, audio DAC. So that will lend itself to um, better quality audio processing for one thing but also you, because you have audio in now you can signal process so this would be a good module for say you know you would do a reverb or something you could do a signal in then you could do like you know stereo reverb out or um, a ping pong delay or something like that. And, um, the again, you need the um, a lot of processing power for that stuff, so that's where you want to use the Pico 2, and you probably want to overclock it. Um, this module I set up for 22 kilohertz audio, and that was kind of a trade off be because the, the Pico 2, even overclocked, struggled with say that rings code because it's a again, very floating point intensive and it just couldn't handle it at 44 kilohertz. So it, it kind of depends on what you're what you're doing, but with the um, the audio the the uh, PCM uh, 5102 etc. That you'll be able to clock it. You know, if the processor's got enough power, you'll be able to clock it at 44 kilohertz. If it hasn't got enough power, you can clock it down to 22 kilohertz or whatever. And the anti-aliasing filters are, are built in, so it'll just follow whatever sampler frequency uh, you're using. So. Yeah, so that one is still. Uh, I have the design done. I have to verify that um, it, it, you know, that with a prototype that it actually works. Um, and I'll redesign this board. It's actually mostly done already, 
and uh, when that's done, I'll do another video, I guess, on it and um, put that stuff up on GitHub. So, yeah, so this is all ready to go. Um, yeah, if you're interested, download the stuff and have fun with it.